Welcome to No Notes Needed. My name is Natasha Fitch, Commercial Manager for Biological Safety Cabinets at Thermo Fisher Scientific. And today we're going to demonstrate how Thermo Scientific HeraSafe 2030i Class II BSCs use Smartful Plus technology to help protect samples. We are joined today by Dr. Dave Phillips, our Senior Global Product Technology Specialist at Thermo Fisher Scientific. Hi Dave, what do you have for us today? Hi, Natasha. As you know, one of the really cool features of this new generation of Class II biosafety cabinets is the airflow compensation. Oh, yes. Airflow compensation helps biosafety cabinets maintain airflow while filters are loading or other interruptions are occurring. This is a big deal because it is the airflow that keeps biohazards in and room contaminants out of the biosafety cabinet. Exactly, but if you remember from some of our other no notes needed demonstrations, it's the balance of the inflow velocity and the downflow velocity that provides that correction. Right, so if the inflow is not fast enough, biohazards in the cabinet might get out. And if the downflow is not fast enough, room contaminants might get in. And the tricky thing for compensation is that the loading of the exhaust filter affects the inflow and the loading of the downflow filter affects the downflow. SmartFlow Plus has the ability to independently compensate both inflow and downflow separately. And do you have a demonstration of this or how are we gonna do this? Absolutely, I've been thinking about this for some time and there's uh, three components. First, I have a DEM, direct inflow measuring device. This is the same sort of device that's used in the annual field certification and it will measure the, the inward flow and CFM of the cabinet, the inflow. Second, I have placed in the cabinet a thermal anemometer, again, it's the same type of device that's used to measure downflow as part of the annual certification. Uh, it's reading out feet per minute. See now it's like 61 feet per minute. And then third, I, I have uh, crafted this fine piece of frame with pre-filter material that will allow us to add a restriction just to the exhaust filter by placing it on top of the exhaust. First, let's write down the current unobstructed inflow volume or CFM. We have an inflow CFM of 350 and we have a downflow velocity of 61. So uh, if you would put it on top, very good. And we immediately see the inflow CFM drop to 325, 305, now 310 and it's holding at 310 and it begins to recover. So at the lowest it was 310 and our downflow was still at 61. We'll wait and see how much it recovers back up to that 350. Now it's at 325, 330, 340. And this is the airflow compensation on the exhaust motor, 345 and 350. And at 350 CFM with it completely recovered, we have a downflow velocity of 60. Now we should see the same thing happen in reverse. Natasha, if you'll remove that diffuser, we should see the uh, inflow CFM overshoot as the restriction is removed, 395, 390. So at 390, we still have a downflow CFM of 59 feet per minute, pretty close. and an inflow CFM of, we were at 370. And as it recovers, as, a, as the inflow compensation settles down back to our 350 or so, we're at 355 now, and we're at 350, and we have a downflow of 60 feet per minute. Very good. Okay, so Dave, I found that really interesting, very informative. So we have here our data set from the experiment that we just did. Can you explain a little bit to us what just happened there? I am very pleased with this set. You see the airflow compensation working wonderfully on the inflow. For this cabinet to work right, it should be between 328 and 361. So before we started, it was okay at 350. When we added the restriction, it dropped down to 310 but the cabinet did what it was supposed to and reacted to that, sped up the fan, brought it back up to the 350 that it was set at. When we removed the, the uh, additional restriction, it overshot because of the release of that restriction. But again, the compensation kicked in, it noticed that, and it dialed back down to the 350. 
we also see the independence because all through this whole process, as the inflow is going high and low and responding to restriction and responding to the release of restriction, we see the downflow velocity, 61, 61, 60, 59. Yeah, just very, very tight. It's only varying within, what, two feet per minute. So uh, it's a very effective demonstration of both the airflow compensation and more significantly, the independence of airflow compensation that we have on the 2030i. Fantastic. So with SmartFlow Plus, it was able to maintain inflow independently from downflow, which stayed the same even as the inflow was adjusted. Yes, and we can only do this because we have separate downflow and exhaust fans and separate monitoring. So that was a great demonstration, Dave. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining us today for this edition of No Notes Needed. Until next time.